It's tax season in the US. And if you haven't done your crypto taxes yet, you're in luck because I'm about to share with you some tips that'll save you a ton of time and headache. These are not gonna be the same old tips that you've heard a million times though. No, these are gonna be some pro tips from someone who spent close to 100 hours on his crypto taxes in the past and has tried over five tax tools along the way. So I guarantee you'll find some tips valuable or else write me in the comments and I'll personally apologize. Also, just FYI, this video is sponsored by CoinLedger, but these tips will help you regardless of which tool you choose. And if you do decide to go with them after watching this video, I'll share a discount code that you can use. Okay, so the first few tips are all about selecting a great crypto tax tool. And the first tip is to choose a tool that supports the blockchains and exchanges you've used. This is especially important if you've been trying out some cutting edge chain or some obscure exchanges. For example, I used Solana shortly after its launch, so that following tax season, I needed a tool that can import Solana wallets. Most of the tools support Solana now, but back then, it was newer, so not all of them had that integration yet. So finding one that did saved me a ton of time. Anyways, my next tip is to look for a tax tool with great customer support. Trust me, this doesn't seem like that important of a differentiator, but it really is. Imagine that you're stuck trying to figure out some missing transaction, but you're confused about what the tool is showing you. Well, in that case, having someone answer you in a timely manner makes a world of difference. You don't wanna be stuck waiting a week just to get a simple response, because that's gonna hold up your entire taxes. And yeah, unless your taxes are super simple, then it's pretty much guaranteed that you'll need to interact with their support team at some point. Now, my tip number three, is to make sure that your tax tool has a great user interface and great user experience. Like most tools out there have similar capabilities these days. I mean, calculating gains and losses isn't rocket science, right? But still, if you really take the time to try out different tools, you'll notice that they give you some different ways to view your data, filter your transactions, etc. Those seem like minor differences, but they actually matter a ton when you're trying to dig through thousands of transactions to find something wrong or missing. In the past, I had to put some transactions into Excel sell and create my own pivot tables to find what's off because the tax tool didn't do those simple calculations for me. Now I use a tool that does and my goodness, does it make a world of difference. Anyways, my next tip is to try out a few different tax tools and compare the final results that they give you. I know I said that these tools pretty much do the same thing these days, but some of their underlying logic to handle edge cases still differ a bit. So if you have a pretty messy situation, then you may want to try out a few different tax tools to see how their final results stack up. That way you can at least get more confidence in those results if they all say similar things. Or if they disagree, then you have more information to dissect what's wrong. Now this next tip is super important to do before you go too deep with any particular tool. And that's to make sure that their pricing is affordable for your situation. Like if you've used some trading bot or yield program in the past, then you'll have a ton of transactions to process. And if that's the case, then you better find a tool that has an affordable unlimited tier. Some tools charge us more for additional transactions. So if you have like 10,000 transactions, then you may end up paying like $500 just to use that tool. So yeah, gotta consider pricing before you get too far and too deep. Now, this next tip applies regardless of which tax tool you use. And that's to keep in mind that sometimes the problem is not with the tool, but rather with the exchange you're pulling the data from. Sometimes the exchange API or even CSV exports will have huge chunks of missing data. And you can't really tell unless you go to the exchange dashboard and manually check what you see on the screen versus what was in the CSV or API export. I'm not gonna name any names, but some pretty well-known international exchanges have this issue and took me forever to even realize what was going on. I was like, what the heck? I imported it through their system. It must be right. But nope, they had months worth of missing data that I had to manually add in later. So just keep that in mind that it may be a source of problems when you go reconciling your transactions. Now, another tip along those lines is that some tax tools don't properly read in your exchange CSV files. Like most crypto tax tools just say to download the CSV file and then drag and drop it onto their site. And most of the time that works fine but sometimes it misses some entries or miscategorizes them. So if that's the case, the safest way to do it is to take your tax tools 
generic CSV import template and then port your Exchange CSV file into that generic template. That way, you can be sure that they'll read in everything perfectly and nothing will be missed. Now, all these tips so far have been related to the tax tools themselves, but there are some things you can do before tax season rolls around to make your life easier. Like for example, one tip is just don't be too degen with your crypto activities. Instead of aping into all sorts of strange yield farms on obscure chains, stick to trading on popular exchanges or well-known DEXs on well-known chains. That'll cut down the time it takes to reconcile your taxes significantly. And that's why I mostly just keep it simple these days in terms of my trading activity. But even if you still want to degen, this next tip still applies to you. And that's to do tax loss harvesting at the end of each year. That just means to sell some of your positions with unrealized losses so that you can realize those losses. And that's super useful because you can use those losses to offset any gains either now or in the future. Like if you book 20,000 in losses this year and then you make 20,000 in gains next year, you can offset that completely. It can also be used to offset some of your ordinary income, but only up to a certain amount each year. Now, my last tip is just to write down your end of year balances for all your wallets and exchanges, because some tax tools only show your balance up to the end of the year that you bought their software for. Like say it's March, 2023 right now but your tax tool only shows the balances up until December 31st, 2022, because that's the tax year that you paid for their tool for. Then that makes it hard to compare balances if you had some further activity between December 31st and the time that you're working on your crypto taxes, right? So an easy fix for that is just to write down your balances near the end of each year, just in case you need to use that. Now, those are my pro tips, and I hope you learned something valuable from those. But if you're in the market for a crypto tax tool, like let's say you're looking for your first one, or you have one, but you're not satisfied with it. Then you gotta check out CoinLedger and here's why. The biggest reason is because they're completely free to try out. There's no limits on their functionality unlike other tools. And you only pay if you decide to use them to generate your final reports. So I can't see any reason not to at least try them out. But the second reason to consider is because they have great pricing options. Check this out, super reasonable. And even if you go above 3000 transactions to so like 10,000, it's still not that bad. And plus you can use my discount code in the description to get 10% off. Now, another reason to try them out is because they have a very intuitive workflow. You'll see what I mean in the demo part of this video, but seriously, if you don't have anything too complicated, then you can fly through your crypto taxes with CoinLedger. And then their final reports can be imported into TurboTax, TaxAct, and other tax prep software like that. So it's just super fast and seamless. But if you have a more complicated situation like missing transactions, duplicates or whatnot, then you're also in luck because their review transactions tool is super powerful and detailed and it's gonna help you pinpoint exactly what your problems are. I'm also gonna show you that during the demo, but dang, is it organized. And lastly, they support a lot of networks like Solana, Optimism, Arbitrum, just to name a few. Now, finally, it is time to show you CoinLedger in action. Okie dokie, so I've already logged into CoinLedger and this is the first page that I see. I'm on import. And as you can see, I've already imported some various exchanges and wallets but let me import a new one just to show you that part of the process. So click on add account. Then I'm going to do crypto.com, upload file, drag and drop, and then it's importing. Boom, 213 transactions. And that was so fast, way faster than some other tools I've used in the past. Um, but then you can sort by years or see all years. You can sort, you can add a manual transaction. You can go and change classifications if you need to, even though most of this I don't need to touch. You can edit the transaction if there's different amounts, if we want to change the amounts or the price. But that's pretty self-explanatory, right? You need to do this with all your exchanges and wallets on different chains. And then next up is the review step. Okay, so this is the review page, which shows us all the transactions we've pulled into CoinLedger. And if you click on filters, you can select the individual account to look at just the transactions in there, or you can select the coin or token and just look at the transactions for those across all the different data sources. You can do date range, transaction type, and other, which is kind of helpful, right? Sometimes if you've like manually edited some and you wanna see the ones that was edited by you, then you can just click on edited, ignored as well. 
But I think where we need to do the work here is to review, right? There are some with missing cost bases. It says, it looks like you've had some transactions of missing cost bases and are inflating your net capital gains because they assume a cost basis of zero for tax reporting purposes, right? Like that's the most conservative way to do so. Um, but if you have like self transfers and you want to mark that properly, so it's not just inflating your capital gains. Anyways, there's two that they show me. You can click here to review potential report impact, missing cost bases, 499 USDC troubleshoot. And this missing cost basis report is so helpful because we're looking at a USDC missing cost basis transaction, right? So it shows you all the different ones that are trades, deposits, withdrawals, and unmapped. Total USDC with missing basis, potential impact, first sign of missing basis. So you don't have to search through like all of your transactions forever. It tells you where's the first area to start looking. It says you have unmapped transactions. We should map these. And then inflows have missing basis. We should fix that. Review some deposits to see if it was an income event or a trade per se, right? So we should follow all these steps to fix these troubleshooting sections. And then we can just look at all our USDC ones here too. Missing class basis, please review. And then we can like change classification or add a manual transaction to tie it to, et cetera. This is really, really helpful and so clean because if we didn't have this, then we'd have to make like pivot tables on Excel to figure it out. And I've had to do that in the past and it's not fun. So once we've got those fixed, then it's time for the tax report. It shows us capital gains for this year, total income, and this is super helpful, end of year position, right? So that's why I told you during the earlier part of the video to write down how much you had at the end of each year. So you can just match it up with this and see what potentially has an error, right? Because if this says we have nine ETH, but we actually have seven or we actually have 11, then we know we have to go add some sources or fix something. And then this calculation method, I don't use this. So we can go to settings, go to tax settings, and then you can change that. Like last in first out, for example. And this advanced setting, this is so useful. You can map a ticker symbol to a specific asset because sometimes coins share symbols with other tokens, right? So in that case, the system's gonna think you have like two different tokens or that it's the same when it shouldn't be the same. Anyways, this tool is so useful to help you map out assets. And then when you're done with all that, you can go get your forms for the IRS if you want to send to your accountant or if you want to import into h and Block, TurboTax, Tax Act, or just CSV Audit Trail and other just CSV reports, right? These are all super useful. And you can also get an expert review if you want someone to look over your data and your account. That's pretty much it. All right, so if you're sold and wanna try out CoinLedger for free, then just use my link below. Let me know if you have any questions about my 10 general tips and then use my discount code for 10% off.